We get it. We're live. Yeah, we are live, but we'll wait for some people to come on. Hey guys. Hey, hey everybody. Is there anybody in there? So anyway, today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about finishing your cross stitch projects to get them ready to frame by washing them. And so we're going to be doing that and we are a few minutes early. Yeah, yeah we are. But oh, my phone says we're almost right on time. But that's great cuz last time we had a couple stragglers. So. Yeah. So we are just going to um begin in a few minutes. Uh, give me give people a couple of minutes, but I'll let you guys know what we've been doing this week. Um we'll talk about a number of items and then we're going to get right into washing needlework fabrics. For those of you that are wondering about my shirt, um, you can't see it uh, properly, but it's procrastinate. That's a verb to cross stitch when you could be doing housework. We do carry these shirts. They come in this color and purple. They're a fun shirt. We've really enjoyed them. And uh, we will be carrying them in our store. They're a special order. They take about six days to get in. Welcome, Sarah from England. Hi. Across the pond. Claire across the pond. So we um, really appreciate you joining us today. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin, um, even though we've got a lot of stragglers and also it's a holiday weekend. So we know a lot of people went out of um, out for Labor Day. Hey, David. Hey. Love David, guys. David is one of my admins in my large group, Cindy's Online Selling Tips. And David and I have been friends for a number of years. And April has her own thoughts about him. She thinks he's a brilliant. She thinks he's a genius. So whenever we have a question, we just say, she says, oh, just call David. So anyway, <laughs> um, we're going to begin. Uh, Pat Carson has just joined us. We're really excited about that. Um, so, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a few things that have popped up in the group this week. First of all, we're just going to give you a heads up on Bothy Threads. Bothy Threads, um, I had to sign some deals with them to um, do some exclusives, um, getting them into the country. I have to do customs. I have to do a lot of uh, currency changes, the way it's paid for and everything. So they are coming. They are on their way, and we will be continuing to carry them in the future. Uh, a lot of times it depends on how fast it gets there. Hey, Gwenda, nice to join us. Also, um, the Just Cross Stitch Christmas issue for 2016 came out this week. We will be carrying them. They are $9.99, and they will be um, shipped first class, and it costs about $2.90 to ship them. So if you do want those, let me know because they are shipping to me tomorrow, and I can add to my order. Um, I don't know for sure if they will ship tomorrow due to the holiday, but if not, it'll be Tuesday morning. Also, we are announcing that we will do special orders on uh, Weeks Dye Works and the Crescent Colors, whatever the new name is. I can never remember it. To me, they've always been Crescent Colors. So we will be doing those. They are now retailing for two fifty up uh, uh, skein, and we will be carrying them for $2.00. 19 cents a skein. So if anybody wants them, just give me a list and it takes up that one takes about 10 days to get. Also, um, April and I never know what to list. So we're begging you to tell us, Hey Cindy, why don't you go ahead and list something like fantasy or something like that? And then we can bump those albums. Tina's really good at bump bumping the albums we have. But we have millions, literally millions of patterns in storage and around here. My husband would like them all gone because they're <laughs> overtaking the house. And so we would love for you guys um, to please, please um, let us know what you want listed. Um, and David, if you say clowns, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> I'm not a clown fan. And um, Cassia, hi. Cassia wants to know what we're washing. We're going to be washing finished needlework projects and how to do them. So whenever you find any cassia in a thrift store and it's dirty, we are going to teach you how to wash it to prepare it for sale. Exactly. Like this stain right here, if you can see it. <laughs> there we go. Stained. Yep. 
So, but anyway, um, the other thing is we are going to do our next lesson on needles. What type of needles to use, why you use a certain needle, how to thread a needle, what to do with your needle when it's not in your, when you're not stitching and that sort of thing. So we're pretty excited about that next week. And um, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to begin and I'm going to have April ask questions um, about washing and then we're going to go into complete detail about washing your finished project. Right. So as you all know, I'm such a stitcher, right? <laughs> Just kidding. But if I was a stitcher, I would need to know what do I do with my project when it's finished? Should I wash it? And there's a lot of people that say, but my project isn't dirty. It looks absolutely clean to me. And I was really careful about keeping it clean. Some people don't wash them because they think they've kept them clean. I wash them because I don't know if I got up to go answer the door and came back and started stitching on it. And I don't know what kind of oils and stuff are in my hand. I've had too many projects that I've worked on that I didn't wash in the early days. And now you can see where there's discolorations and I believe it's from the oils in my hand. So I take the um, word of caution and I wash all of my projects. How do you wash them? Soap? The washer? The dishwasher? I don't know. <laughs> oh, April. <laughs> you are too cute. So what you do is um, because of a lot of the issues with dye lots now, I think there's a lot more issues than there were you know, 35, 40 years ago when I started. So what you want to do is a lot of times you may have problems with the dyes uh, blending or uh, bleeding. So what I do is I always pre-rinse my project to get it wet. That's really important to me. So what I do is I pre-rinse it to get it wet and then I soak it in vinegar water for, um, about 30 minutes. Now you want to make sure that your water is cold. And the reason why is that sets the dyes. The vinegar really helps. You take it out and you let it dry. And I would not probably do it on this piece with vinegar because I don't have to worry much about pieces uh, bleeding. But if you have reds and blacks, I do use vinegar. Last few projects I've done, I have not. Something like this, I would probably not use the vinegar. But if you do have any I'm going to reach behind me and hope nothing falls down here because I have a bin of, you know, everybody like ordinary vinegar, ordinary vinegar. Yes. Um, not apple cider, just ordinary distilled vinegar. I have a lot of unfinished projects here. Here's one I would definitely put vinegar on and it's because of the orange. Um, so I would soak it in vinegar, rinse it, and then let it sit and dry. What if I had hard water? Does that make a difference? Yes. If your water in your area is really hard, I suggest using a bottle of distilled water. My water here is not as hard as some places, and I've been really lucky. Um, the dilution to vinegar to water, you're going to hear a lot of people say different things about what the solution is, but what I do is I do about half and half. I use it, um, I don't use it um, a lot, so I'm, I can't give you the exact numbers, but I will follow up on that. So after the vinegar, would I use soap like Tide or Woolite? No, 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 no. You don't want to use um, any type of harsh chemicals. Woolite will set your colors and it will be hard to get the item, you know, to get any stains or any oils out. Um, some people use, uh, I know Pat Carson uses ivory snow. Um, have you tried to find ivory snow lately? Very hard to find. I have always been a very, very firm believer, firm, firm believer of Dawn dishwashing soap. And it has to be Dawn. And remember that Dawn dishwashing soap also comes in a concentrate. So what you want to do is you want to go to your sink. I do not use my sink because you don't know how dirty it is, even if you scrub and clean and do everything. I don't use my sink. I use a large cake pan. I only brought a small one in because just my luck, I would drop my other one. Um, this is a clean, uh, large cake pan. And what I do, um, 
I don't, um, Shelly Perry's just asked me not just to back up a little bit. Do you put more than one in the vinegar ba bath at once? No, you always, always, always only do one project at a time. You don't want anything that might bleed to go into another project. Um, so anyway, so what you want to do is you want to get a large cake pan, fill it with water, cold water, and what you want to do is you want to put a little bit of Dawn dishwashing soap in it, rub it all around, you know, do it all around. And let's say your project is dry. So you've got your project right here. Run it under the cold water first, under the sink. If you're using distilled water, dip it in. You want to get it wet. You want to get it wet in there. So what you want to do, um, and, and absolutely, Pat, it is Dawn dishwashing soap that is blue. Blue I Dawn dishwashing original. soap. The yeah, original the original Dawn. Dawn. Original Dawn. Now, I'm using a small cake pan here, so normally a big cake pan. And again, the reason why I use the cake pan is because I don't want to use my own sink because I don't know what's in there, you know, even though as clean as it can be, I do know that my cake pan is really clean. So what I do is I just take it, I dip it into the water, and I just swish it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You'll be amazed how much and how dirty your fabric, I mean, your water will become. You do that a number of times. What I do is I do it three times. And people laugh at me. They're like, oh, there's not going to be any dirt left. You'll be amazed still at the third time how dirty it still is. You know, I mean, how much, how dirt there's still, you know, in your water. Then what I do as I, to rinse it, I again run it under cold water. I run it under the water, just try to get all the soap out, but then I do it in this cake pan again. Rinse it out, rinse it out, rinse it out, rinse it out. Now if it's really dirty, yes, you can soak it in the Dawn dish soap overnight. Um, I've had to do that with a couple of projects that I have spilt coffee on. And in fact, my mouth is dry, so let me get me a cup. <laughs> That coffee would be more appropriate this time of day instead of my normal drink affair in the evenings. But um, so anyway, you want to rinse it, rinse it, rinse it. Now you're not wringing it. Do not wring it like this. You're just going to rinse it. You're going to try to get into all the fibers. You're going to rinse it. You can run it under the water. What I say in my cake pan, I want the water to be so clean after you rinse it that you would drink this water yourself. And that's always been kind of my um, rule of thumb is to do it that way. So when you're done washing it, how do you get all the leftover water out? If you can't wring it, what okay. do you do? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're not going to wring it like this and you don't want to roll it like this because you're going to have your fab, your threads touching each other and they can smash each other. What I do is 29 years ago when my son was born, I bought these awesome diapers. These were cloth diapers, really thin. They're 100% cotton. You can use any type of 100% cotton. I know some people use white terry towels. I love these. I love what these are. So let's just say this project is wet. I put it in between the towel or the cloth. I roll it. Can you see me rolling it? Remember, you know, we're just on the TV here. <laughs> the, you know, Stitchery Express uh, YouTube channel here. So what you do, see how you've got it like this? You just take it, take your fingers, see how we've got the two fingers, and you pull out the fabric. You just pull them out like this. And so um, you want to do like this. And so what you're doing is you're getting that excess water. What I do is I roll the sheet back out, lay my piece of fabric on it, but I take the other end and lay this on top when it comes time to iron, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But what I do is you just want to make sure you've got all that excess and just lay it out. So we've had a couple questions. Is vinegar safe for over-dyed floss? Um, yes, it is if you follow the directions of your floss. So different flosses between sampler dye threads, um, between, I mean, sampler threads, Weeks Dye Works, uh, Crescent Colors, all the different um, companies dye differently so you want to follow their directions on how they dye. I'm a big lover of sampler threads. I love sampler threads. 
I've never had much problems with them die, um, bleeding, um, but I do always use the vinegar with those and I've never had a problem. What about if you have a crease from your stitching ring or, you know, you folded your fabric up, can you iron your stuff? Is that safe? Yeah, so what you want to do is, um, now a lot of people, um, a lot of people will lay these on terry cloths. Um, I don't have white terry cloths at my house. You always want to use white because I have a 14 year old boy. So terry cloths and white do not stay white long. So I love these, these um, diapers that I have. I have a whole two or three big bags of them that I use just for this that I've kept over 30 years. But you can use a terry cloth. And what you do is you just lay it on the um, terry cloth. And then after you're done with it, after you've laid it on it, you pull on this end and on this end like this. Because what you're basically doing is you're blocking it. You're pulling it to stretch it. So you're pulling from side to side in both directions. And what you're doing is it's unlike needlework, you know, needlepoint, which I don't like anyway. But it, you know how it comes and it's all skitty wampus and everything and you don't like that. Cross stitching still needs some form of blocking, so you pull it in both directions to get it to um, to lay down. But when it comes time to ironing, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you don't have any stains. You need to look at it after it's dried. You need to look at to make sure that it's completely dried and there are no stains. So say, for example, I was, wa I was looking at this and I went, uh-oh, there's a huge stain down there huge stain and I missed it well before you iron it you want to make sure you get that out and the reason why is your heat in your iron will set that and it won't come out so what do I use two things um, so what I do is I use um, I, I will spot clean it with Dawn dishwashing soap again if it doesn't come out then I use a product that is called carpet details do not let the name th throw you off it's a mineral based spot cleaner where there's no soap in it. And I have used it miraculously. And we just noticed this today that some coffee spilled on this. And so I, as soon as I get my coffee ca carpet details from David uh, Rayer, who is in our group, by the way, when I get his um, um, carpet cleaner, carpet details, I'm going to do a spot check on this and I'll follow up with you guys on what happened. One thing to do is also, I noticed that this one, I didn't stitch this by the way, this was given to me as a gift. Um, maybe it was someone suggesting, suggesting that I needed to cook because it says <laughs> aprons. But I noticed there's a hoop mark in here. I do not use hoops, I do not use frames, I do not use Q-snaps, I stitch all by hand. So you can always tell when I didn't stitch something. But if that, is, that crease is not out when you get ready to iron that, you want to use a little bit of steam to get that out. But one thing for you guys that use hoops, you want to take it out of your project every night and you also want to make sure that if you are using your hoop that you want to wash it every night with soapy water and let it air dry. Um, I think the biggest thing that we see when we get ready to frame something is trying to get that hoop mark out because you've left your project in there for so long. And Susie's asking, do I block every time? Every time I every time I do a project, I always wash it. And part of that is blocking it by pulling it, stretching it, making sure. We're going to go into a whole framing um, class, two or three different ways to do framing in the next few weeks. And so um, David sells this spot cleaner on the Facebook group, and he also sells it on eBay. Um, buy it through him on the group because then he doesn't have to pay those eBay fees. But anyway, we'll tag um, April or Tina, we'll tag him and move up his album. An amazing, amazing product. It's the only product that I found that really gets those stains out. So um, anyway, um, so what you want to do is you want to ha make sure you have your towel over your project. I put, two t I put two of these, one on the bottom, my project, and then... I fold it over and have one on the back because you don't want to smash your um, thread, your stitches with your iron. If there is the hoop, you want to use a little bit of steam. I never use it with the steam right on it. I lift the iron, let the steam come out, let it set for a minute, and then put it back down. 
April was asking me earlier, how hot is your iron? You want to just play with it to where it's warm to hot, but not really hot because that can burn the fabric. It can burn the stitches. It can burn the threads. I've seen a lot of damage done from irons. What would you have to say about dry cleaning? Can we jump over all of this and just take it to the cleaners? No, no, you do not want to take it to the cleaners. The reason why You'll hear people say, well, just take it to the dry cleaners. If you have needlepoint, take it to the dry cleaners because it, the canvas is um, a water-based canvas and it'll unblock it and everything. But with cross-stitch, no, the chemicals and dry cleaning will completely ruin your project. And I'll stand by that to every dry cleaner that has ever told me. When I judge across the country, I can see when people have taken things to dry cleaners because they have a filament on them and they have like a coating on them. So that is... Ugh. Don't even get me going on dry cleaning <laughs> cross stitch. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, so I don't know. So what I we're, think this is fantastic. I learned so much today. So what we want to do is we want to go back over this. Cold water, Dawn dishwashing soap. Very simple. You can put it in the you can put it in the cake pan or whatever. The reason why I like a cake pan instead of a bowl is because it's even, it's consistent, you can roll the piece through the bowl, you know, just completely roll it through the bowl, and, and I mean, through the cake pan, in the bowl it gets all wadded up. And so what you want to do is you want to put it in there, you can leave it in there overnight if you want. Um, I tend to find that I have to rinse it a lot more if I do leave it over. Hey Sarah, how are ya? And so you just want to um, roll it over. Now, I don't see Lynn Kerr here, and I don't see Kimberly not, uh, Morrow and Sherry. They'll be here, or they'll watch it later. They must be out for the holiday. Oh, wait. It's not Labor Day in Canada. Lynn, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Dawn Dishwashing Soap, Original Blue, Cool Water, Cake Pan, you know, um, I like the cake pan. I don't use my sink again because you don't know, you know, if there's residual soap in it or if there's residual oils. Um, and so it is a holiday in, in Canada, huh? Oh. I didn't know that. Yes. It is Labor, Labor Day. Day. Thank you, Canada. Pat. And thank you for joining us also. Um, so anyway, um, the other thing that I want to keep, keep in mind is some people do use terry, terry towels. Um, if you, it should be a light color because you don't want that terry towel to bleed into your project. Watch the um, floss if you're using hand dyed floss, silks. Read that. Um, read that. How they want you to clean it. Hey Kim. What are your so, thoughts on shrinking? Should we be concerned that as the material dries, it will shrink? It'll give a little bit because some. Um, a lot of cross stitch fabrics, you hope that they don't have a lot of sizing in them, but like pure linens and stuff will not shrink. But the thing is, is that's why I tend to, um, this one is really stitched very well. The lady that stitched this for me did a fabulous job, but, um, I haven't had much with, with shrinkage, but that's where what happens is when you are looking at it to, um, stretch it, you want to make sure that your stitches are not real, real, real tight. I'm a very tight stitcher. Still can't get rid of that after 30 some years, even using the ring finger to try to get my tension. I am a tight stitcher. So, um, but anyway, Kathy, thank you for joining us and please come back and watch it later because we will have it um, to, to view. Um, but all your cotton Adas and everything, they will stretch. I mean, they will shrink, but remember that your flosses are also cotton. So I haven't had much of a shrinkage problem, you know, but they will shrink some. But one thing that we're going to talk about next week is needles and why to use them. And, um, and in that, I'll talk a little bit about tension because I use 28 tapestry needles. And I've really learned by the eyes breaking how to really control it a little bit better. So we'll talk about needles next week. But any, anyway, the other thing is, is to keep in mind is um, that when you're laying this out, lay it out flat, um, If even, whether it's a terry towel, whether it's these diapers I use. Um, I love these things, by the way. Um, and no, I'm not marketing them. 
because I don't think they even make them anymore. They may. But I love these. These are They are known in the house as not to touch because they're mom's cross-stitch stuff. When we, But what I do is I lay them out, iron them, a little bit of steam for your folds, for your creases. Um, you want to also remember that um, if you can see this was surged on the edge, if you are using tape, which you should not be doing on your edges, make sure you cut that um, all off. Sarah, that's a great idea. A plain white towel is perfect. I know Pat uses a terry towel. I just don't do white terry in my house. We don't do white other than my son's school uniforms. <laughs> I know April's got four kids. Yeah, There's No white at my house either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so you want to make sure that if you have used um, fray check, which I do encourage tapes, you want to make sure those are cut off before. Um, if you're going to cut them off, because even if you tear them off, there's still a lot of chemicals in there. So, um, we've only got a few minutes. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. We're just trying to keep these at 30 minutes every Sunday so that everybody can, you know, take a short time to watch it. Um, also please let us know about, um, any, the items you guys want to see us list, um, on the, um, group. You know, any topics, any subjects, anything. If we already have albums, which we have over 300, we can bump those albums up. I know on the iPhone, you can only see 100 albums at a time. We have almost 500 or more than 500 albums in the group. So sometimes you have to go in through Safari and look at the classic eBay, I mean, uh, Facebook site. And uh, Shelly's asking if I use a press cloth. Um, I don't, Shelly, I use this, which is basically like a press cloth. This is like a cotton diaper. This is my press cloth. I have it two layers with the fabric in between. But if I'm using a terry towel, then I would use this still on top of the terry towel. I would put a blanket like, the, I mean a blanket, a diaper like this or cloth. We are on um, every Sunday at 12 Mountain Time um, from 12 to 12.30. And so... Um, so we are we're going to be here every Sunday stitching with April and Cindy, even though she doesn't stitch. <laughs> we're gonna get her New Year's one resolution. Day, one day. And also if you guys can see behind us, this is our specialty line of fabrics that we are doing through Fabric Flare. We have everything. We have our Witch's Moon fabric, which everybody has been awesome about. We just want to give a plug into that. This is the Witch's Moon for the Eva pattern. But there's a lot of patterns that you can use um, uh, to do this. I've seen uh, the new Happy Halloween by Stony Creek is being stitched on this right now. Eva, there's a number of patterns that this is used for. And so, yes, Sarah, I do ship to the UK. We ship to the UK daily. And we use large first class um mail if it's a flat package so that saves you quite a bit on shipping happy to help you out with that also pat just reminded me you want to always make sure that your cross stitch fabric is face down when you're ironing you're ironing the back with a cloth in between it um so kim nuns just um gave us a big plug for our fabrics she's been very very happy with our um fabrics that we are now carrying we have thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces in stock in about every color you can imagine. And we also are going to be happy to be announcing that we will be having a Fabric of the Month Club. Ooh. So um, college logos and equestrian items. Cecilia, we'll get those out. We've got quite a bit of religious items. And because of licensing, there's not a lot with college logos because of licensing. Um, the lady that had the license has since retired, um, but we will look and see what we've got. If you'll PM me and let me know if you need any from certain colleges, I'll be happy to help you. Um, um, Tina, on the dyed fabrics that we carry, they are pretty much set, but if they're darker ones, you'll want to wash them in, in cold water. And yes, they are okay to wash. He um, uses a special dye on those that are not the chemicals that many of the other dyers use. So if there's no other questions, it looks like we're getting yeah. close to 30. 
minutes and um please let us know what you want to hear in the future and we'll see you guys in the group and we'll see you next sunday also next week the class will be on needles, needles. what type of needles why you need a tapestry needle how to eye a needle what to do with your needle when it's done and we'll also be talking about the amazing needles that uh pat carson is bringing back to the market after many years of not having them back on the market they are made in japan and we're tickled about that so um thank you guys and darla great to see you thanks everybody see you next week